Hello everyone, this is Rohan and in this video, I am going to give you an introduction to conjugate beam method. So let's get started. Conjugate beam method is a method of structural analysis which is used to determine the slopes and deflections of beams. So when we solve a problem using conjugate beam method, ultimately we are trying to find out the slope and the deflections at various points of a beam. It was developed by H. Muller Breslov in the year 1865. So it's uh, quite an old method, 155 year old method. Uh, it requires almost the same amount of computation as moment area method, but since it relies on the principles of statics, it is uh, uh, familiar for you to apply. Now let us get into the definition of what is a conjugate beam. A uh, conjugate beam is a fictitious beam which has the same span as the real beam but supported in such a manner that when it is loaded by m by ei diagram of the real beam the shear force and bending moment at any section of the conjugate beam gives the slope and deflection at the corresponding section of real beam respectively now i know it's a huge definition so what i would like to do is that break this down into the properties of conjugate beam i have divided it into six properties if you remember these properties you can write the definition on your own so let's see the properties of conjugate beam one by one number one the nature of conjugate beam what is the nature of conjugate beam it is a fictitious beam that means it is not a real beam it is a virtual beam or a fictitious beam what is the span of a conjugate beam? The span of a conjugate beam is the same as the span of the real beam. Thirdly, what about the supports of the conjugate beam? The supports of the conjugate beam are not the same as that of the real beam. What are the supports? We will see in a couple of slides later. But it is important for us to note now that it is not the same as that of the real beam. What about the loading of the conjugate beam? The loading is also not the same as the real beam. In fact, the M by EI diagram of the real beam is the loading of the conjugate beam. The M by EI diagram of the real beam is the loading of the conjugate beam. Fifth, shear force of the conjugate beam gives us the slope of the real beam and lastly bending moment of the conjugate beam gives us the deflection of the real beam so if you remember these six properties you can write the definition of conjugate beam as something like this conjugate beam is a fictitious beam having the same span as the real beam but uh, supported in such a way such that when it is loaded by the m by ei diagram of the real beam then the shear force and bending moment at any section of the conjugate beam is given by the slope and deflection at that corresponding point of the real beam respectively so as you can see if you remember this in your own simple words also you can form the definition of conjugate beam now let us discuss a little about the supports of the conjugate beam what do we know so far that the supports of the conjugate beam are not the same as that of the real beam but there are two properties of the real beam that i would like to draw your attention upon that is the slope of the real beam corresponds to the shear force in the conjugate beam so therefore the slope at the supports of the real beam should also be equal to the shear force at support of conjugate beam similarly we also know that the deflection of the real beam is corresponding to the bending moment of the conjugate beam so therefore the deflection at supports of the real beam should also be equal to the bending moment at the support of the conjugate beam now these two are the fundamentals based on which we will decide that for what kind of support in real beam we have to provide what kind of support in the conjugate beam let's see one by one so suppose in a real beam at one end we have a fixed support now this is a discontinuity sign that means the beam is going on we will take one support at a time okay so here we have a fixed support now what do we know about a fixed support we know that the slope theta at fixed support is equals to zero as well as the deflection y is also equal to 
zero. So how shall we correlate that in the conjugate beam? That means the shear force should also be equal to zero in the conjugate beam and the bending moment should also be zero in the conjugate beam. Now, which is that support? Which is that support for which shear force and bending moment are equal to zero? It is nothing but a free end. It is nothing but a free end. If you have no support at a end, then the shear force and the bending moment at that point is equal to zero. So therefore, if you have a fixed support in the real beam, then in the conjugate beam at that same point of at that same point you will have a free end. Let's see some more examples. For example, in a real beam, if you have a free end you have a free end that means what here the slope is also not equal to zero as well as the deflection is also not equal to zero right because a free end it can have a slope as well as it can have a deflection right so in the conjugate beam the shear force should also not be equal to zero as well as the bending moment should also not be zero so now think which is that support for which neither shear force is zero nor bending moment is zero Yes, it is nothing but a fixed support. So if you have a free end in a real beam for the conjugate beam at that same point, you will have a fixed support. Moving on, <clears throat> if you have a hinged support at one end, what do we know about hinge support? That slope is not equals to zero. Slope is allowed. Slope is allowed here. But the deflection, that is the vertical deflection here will be equals to zero. So theta is not equal to zero, but y is equals to zero. So correspondingly, here also shear force should not be equal to zero, but bending moment should be equal to zero, which is the support for which shear force is not equal to zero, but bending moment is equals to zero. It is nothing but a pin support only or a hinge support. So if you have a hinge support at the end in the real beam, you will have a hinge support at the end in the conjugate beam okay now let's see here we have a intermediate hinge support we have a intermediate hinge support what do we know about the intermediate hinge support the theta is continuous not only it is not zero of course it is not zero but here it is continuous that means if i have an angle like this here theta the same angle will continue here so this is a continuous theta right and of course y is equals to zero no vertical movement is allowed so here the shear force should also be continuous and the bending moment will have to be zero correlating to the theta and y okay now which is that support for which shear force is continuous and bending moment is zero it is nothing but a internal hinge it is nothing but a internal hinge so if you have a internal hinge support here you in the conjugate beam you will have a internal hinge and lastly if you have a internal hinge in the real beam what do we know about the internal hinge? We know that theta is discontinuous. On the left and the right side, it is not necessary that your theta will be discontinuous. It may be the same, it may be the different. And of course, the slopes may also be the different, the signs, I mean. And y is continuous. y means the vertical deflection is continuous. So, which is that support for which the shear force is discontinuous and the bending moment is continuous? It is nothing but a intermediate hinge support okay so as you can see by using this two logics okay i can go on and analyze each and every support for real beam as well as conjugate beam but however in a quick problem solving situation we can't always go back to the fundamentals and keep on thinking that which support is this which support is that so for that here is a simple format wherein you get to see the supports in a real beam and the corresponding supports in a conjugate beam it will be beneficial if you can remember this so for a fixed support in a real beam it will be a free end in a conjugate beam for a free end in a real beam it will be a fixed support in the conjugate beam if it is a end hinge uh, support then it will be a end hinge support in the conjugate beam for a end roller support again it remains the same end roller support for both intermediate hinge support and intermediate roller support in real beam both of them are converted to internal hinge in a conjugate beam and lastly if you have an internal hinge in a real beam you will have a intermediate hinge support in a conjugate beam 
please note this down remember this because this will be very useful for you in solving the problems let's see a bit of the conversion of real beam into a conjugate beam here let's take one by one for type of beam real beam and conjugate beam for example if my real beam is a simply supported beam what is a simply supported beam on one side i have a hinge support and the other side i have a roller support end hinge support end roller support if you just see the slide before this end hinge support remains as a end hinge support end roller support remains as a end roller support so the conjugate beam for a real simply supported beam is a simply supported beam only no changes both the real beam and conjugate beam look the same as far as simply supported beam is concerned next for cantilever beam what is a cantilever beam on one side we have a fixed support on the other side there is a free end now for a fixed end in a conjugate beam it becomes a free end and for the free end the conjugate beam it becomes a fixed support so here you can see this is the real beam then this will be the conjugate beam thirdly if i have a overhang what is there in a overhang the overhang here i have a hinge support there is a intermediate roller support and there is a free end so just see that the end hinge support remains as the end hinge support the intermediate roller support becomes a internal hinge and the free end becomes a fixed end so if this is the real beam this is how you how you convert it into a conjugate beam one last one uh, overhang beam with uh, overhang on both side what what are the things that we have here we have a free end a intermediate hinge support another intermediate hinge support and another free end so what will be the conjugate beam the free end becomes fixed end the intermediate hinge support becomes internal hinge the intermediate hinge support becomes internal hinge and the free end becomes a fixed end so so on and so forth you can uh, convert the real beams into conjugate beam by studying each and every support uh, 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 one by one okay so here now what i want you to do is to please pause the video and try to draw the conjugate beams for the real beams given below here i have given you two beams please pause the video here and try to analyze each and every support of both the beams and draw the conjugate beam all right welcome back i hope you have drawn the conjugate beam here now let's check what do we have here in the first beam we have a end hinge support a intermediate hinge support a internal hinge and a fixed end so what will be my conjugate beam like yes it will be something like this so the the hinge support the end hinge support remains as a end hinge support the intermediate hinge support becomes a internal hinge the internal hinge becomes a intermediate hinge support and the fixed end becomes a free end all right and here in the next one what we have is a end support here okay so what we have here is the end hinge support remains as the end hinge support the internal hinge becomes a intermediate hinge support the intermediate roller support becomes a internal hinge and the end roller supports becomes a end roller support so i hope it is clear how you can convert the real beam to a conjugate beam because that forms the very basis of solving the problems using conjugate beam method okay so let's now move on to understand that what is the sign convention that we are going to use for solving the problems using conjugate beam method here there are clear cut four sign conventions let's go one by one the number one is the sagging bending moment for the real beam is taken as positive and the hogging bending moment will be taken as negative this is quite basic then positive bending moment 
means upward loading for conjugate beam and negative bending moment means downward loading for conjugate beam. Now please remember here the loading of the conjugate beam will be the M by EI diagram of the real beam. So it is important for us to know if the M by EI diagram is positive then the load should be in the upward direction and if the M by EI diagram is negative then the loading should be in the downward direction. Third is Positive shear force for conjugate beam means anti-clockwise rotation of tangent drawn to the elastic curve with respect to the original position as corresponding point in the real beam and vice versa. This basically means is that when you find out the shear force in the conjugate beam, uh, then if it is the positive shear force, then it means that at po that point the slope is anti-clockwise and if the shear force is negative then the slope at that point in the real beam in the real beam the slope at that point is clockwise we will see all of this in detail when we were taking uh, when we are taking the problem uh, and lastly if the bending moment in the conjugate beam is positive then it means that the deflection is in the upward direction and if the bending moment of the conjugate beam is negative that means the deflection in the real beam is in the downward direction. So the first is about the bending moment of the real beam okay sagging is positive hogging is negative then the bending moment if the it is up positive then the loading will be upward if it is negative the loading will be downward then shear force for conjugate beam if it is positive, then the slope is anti-clockwise. If it is negative, the slope is clockwise. And lastly, if the bending moment for conjugate beam is positive, that means the deflection is in the upward direction. If the bending moment for conjugate beam is negative, that means the deflection in the real beam is in the downward direction. And lastly, I'll just give you a brief uh, 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 methodology of how to solve the problems of uh, uh, how to solve the problems using conjugate beam method okay so the at first when you have a problem uh, first thing to do is to convert the real beam to a con conjugate beam we have seen that a couple of slides before how to convert the real beam to a conjugate beam the next step is to draw the m by ei diagram of the real beam what is m by ei diagram you have to basically draw the bending moment diagram of the uh, uh, real beam and you have to divide it by ei okay so bending moment divided by ei then the third is whatever you have found here the m by ei diagram of the real beam now this has to be applied as the loading on the conjugate beam so m by ei diagram will now be a load on the conjugate beam how to apply that load using the sign convention that we had learnt in the previous slide okay now once you have applied the load on the conjugate beam you have to find out the shear force in the conjugate beam that will give you the slope in the real beam and if you are finding out the bending moment in the conjugate beam that will give you the deflection in the real beam so five steps first one is to convert real beam to conjugate beam second is to draw the m by ei diagram of the real beam the third is to apply this m by ei diagram as a loading on the conjugate beam now fourth step is to find out the shear force in the conjugate beam that will give you the slope in the real beam and lastly you find out the bending moment in the conjugate beam that will give you the deflection in the real beam so as you can see in the last step what you are finding the slope and deflection so in the first slide also i told you conjugate beam method is a method to find out the slope and deflection of the beam that's all for today if you have any question you can write in the comments below and in the next video i'm going to take up a problem and try to explain this method further thank you for your attention